So, this is Paramount's Movie World by Slay Me Gaga. Where's the music? The music? I don't uh, do no music. I don't want to get copyright infringement. I should probably pause. Damn it, I had to pause that music. All right. So, Paramount's Movie World by Slay Me Gaga with no music because copyright infringement. Um, this park got the gold <laughs> <all> played. <laughs> um, and yeah. Look at that drop tower. It's NCSO. Guy tower. With awesome. a, a bunch of white girls objects. It's a double deck. Which are pretty well used, I guess. Um, in a coke machine. So yeah, this is based on a Paramount Park. Which one? Cool. Yeah, which one? It's it's an imaginary Paramount Park. It's not a mm. recreation, sadly. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Um. Mm. Yeah. The only thing, there's two things I don't like about this park. Let's start off with that, in that the architecture is very weird. Everything's square and lots of walls. It's like kind of odd, but I guess it's fine in most places, but in some places it's kind of it's a mess. And then it's too compact, I feel. I wish there would have been more space in between stuff, although I guess compactness might feel some, so. Whatever. Um, yeah, he has these <laughs> rides named after some of the franchises from Paramount, um, like King Kong and Temple of Doom, Brian Jones. Um, and then back here, he has this, this Tomb Raider. And he also has um deep impact and the borg assimilator from star trek and of course you also have to have the outer limits is that even a movie is yes a is it a yes. movie yes okay um and we have rock and roll express but i don't think that's a movie but oh, it was a tv show but yes sorry oh my gosh we have hurler which was also a tv show Really? I didn't know that. It wasn't a TV show. But that's that's okay. Oh. It was the Wayne's World thing. Yeah, and it's Wayne's World, which I don't understand Wayne's World at all, but that's okay. Wayne's World. Wayne's World. Uh, uh, is that the Stan where's the Stan Makita's in Wayne's World? Yes. That's one of my favorite yeah. bits of the park. The, the hockey player is standing on top of the dining thing. Oh, he also has a double of seven ride. License to Kill, which what time are we saying? Probably like twenty-one or something. No, eighteen. I don't know. He also has Mission Impossible, which is pretty cool. I believe this is like the first Mission Impossible, where you had like the helicopter. Um, and yeah, for all of his rides, he actually those cues are so good. Yeah, like these cues are insanely good. With all these pre shows and stuff, and now he has uh, all these cutaways, which is really nice. A lot of people don't really do that kind of stuff. Like you don't really see stuff like that anymore. You know, last the last time I can remember, like really good cutaways, like a themed park with a bunch of pre queue shows, is probably like DAW or something like that. Maybe you've seen after I can't, but I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Um. Sorry. Oh my god, I think my chat's frozen. Just oh, I'm sorry. I thought I had my mic unmuted. <laughs> I'm over here going on a clicking rampage. Um. Oh, he also has Top Gun, of course. You cannot forget Top Gun. No, man, it's at, it's at the top. And this is probably my favorite queue in the ride, or in the in the ride in the park. 
He has this um, like wall with like lightning hitting his house called Supercell. Yeah, it's that's that's pretty spectacular. Um, he has an FX action theater, which is a trademark of every time park. These ugly as fuck yellow things in front, but that's the way they were. That's just the way RCTB. Um, probably the area I like the least is probably the entrance area, just because it feels like the oldest. Like its architecture is pretty bland and stuff compared to the rest. I wish we would like a like a um, like the King's Island has, or the King's Dominion, or they have like links seen to countries and stuff like an international street type of thing rather than just these buildings but um i actually really like this kitty area too i think he has a theme to like yeah nickelodeon stuff and this dodge is really awesome and then he has a uh, scooby-doo scooby-doo yeah haunted castle which i really like it's kind of really tucked away in here but the use of these um, default in-game castle objects is really, really nice. Um, he also has one of these um, uh, helicopter thingies that you pedal around a track. No, those are awful. They're the worst things ever to run in real life, but I guess they look awesome. Cool. Uphill. Speaking from experience, it took me forever. Overall, I really like the junior area. I think he and he changed. He updated this in one of the older um, versions of the park. It's kind of just this generic area, but the, the updated area is really nice. And I really like the new franchise attractions that he added. Um, the sign for the drop tower is also really nice, and even like the little area for the action zone is pretty cool so it reminds me a lot of the uh the real action zone areas that the paramount parks used to have um this is great placement for this, this uh, shuttle loop i'm not sure the position or about yeah shuttle coaster whatever it's called um Pretty well done right this ride as well. Good well assuming. Yeah, I mean there's just a lot of stuff in this park. It's kinda hard to talk about it at all. But it's a pretty entertaining park. It's just yeah, something you can look at for a long time. There's a lot of little details that you can spend time looking and trying to find and stuff. One thing that might, well, I, I don't really know if this applies to a lot of people, but I can imagine that if you haven't seen a lot of these movies, you're probably just like, what is this? I don't know what this means. And that might kind of hurt the park a little bit if you're not familiar with the franchises. Which, I mean, who isn't? But at the same time, I'm sure some people have never seen movies like Deep Impact or James Bond or Mission Impossible or King Kong or anything like that. So that, that might be kind of a bummer for some people. If you haven't seen the 1976 King Kong, you should. <laughs> it's great. Um, I think it's probably my favorite ride in the park, the uh, the Son of Beast styled wooden coaster. Yeah. Very fantastic. Uh, the loops over like little pond area. The layout's not perfect. That's the layouts are kind of awkward. For a lot of these coasters, but overall, I mean, pretty pretty well done. The theming is good enough to where you can kind of ignore the awkwardness of the layouts. Um, I really like how he has like um, the station like up on this hill, so you can like see it from where you get in the queue. You have like the, the huge loop. Off to your left, 
good interaction with the uh, the queue. Um, this ride's pretty fantastic as well. The Indiana yeah, Jones ride, the pre queue theming is pretty pretty intense. Um, I really like this up, up more section of the part or the the coaster. Pretty cool to see. Hmm. What else? <laughs> That's like four of the big conversations going on right now. The one thing I don't really like is <laughs> the only thing I don't really like is how the co or the rides kind of like put up to the end of the map, which I actually couldn't really control. But um, usually, I'm not a big fan of when you have rides like literally on the edge of the map, like squeezed in like this. I mean, it's nice that he has these rides here. Yeah, he did, did a pretty good job on them, especially for this toss spin. He has all this. All this theming and stuff, this toss spin is pretty cool, but um, yeah, overall, this is a pretty solid part. It's cool to see, it's definitely unique, too. I mean, there's nothing really yet you can compare this with of recent and be like, oh. This is where he got all of his ideas from. So that's cool. Um, I told him the park reminded me of a uh, Arrow 21 park. <laughs> the back yeah. To the and yeah, there's definitely that feel to it. Use walls for detail as opposed to blocks. Which is not, nothing wrong with it's a different style. Yeah. yeah. Overall, really solid, I think. Um, I feel like, oh, uh, I haven't talked about this at all, but the, um, kind of like concert area, he has these album cover billboards that are just awesome. Like he has this Aerosmith one. I don't, I'm, I'm an uncultured hack, so I don't know any of these albums, but, oh, Orbison Winter Crash, that's okay. Um, <laughs> we have Aer Aerosmith and we have a Queen one and then we have Metallica. I talk once by my favorite one, the crosses, but very nice. Um, 21 people have died. Oh no. Jesus. That's a that's horrible okay. accident. That's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Maybe um, thanks. This is not our season. Please, when it's a Flash Gordon soundtrack. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah, like I said, I'm an, I'm an uncultured hack, so I don't know any of these old albums. Um, yeah. For somebody who's, uh, who's using these wacky worlds, I don't even know if the wacky was a tongue twister, I don't care. They're all terrible, but I think he did a good job of using these objects sparingly enough in, in good enough places to where they don't look like from a different game. I mean, they're all pretty well placed and stuff, which I really like. Like these yeah. motorcycles on top of the speakers and stuff. And those people got assimilated. Wow. Probably Ben, him for saying that. That's so terrible. Um, yeah. Definitely a solid part, and it deserves a download for sure. The most shocking things that people were killed on a ride that wasn't Son of Beast. Yeah. So many windows and places. I think I can just double close the ride and open it. It's fine. I think it happened. Um. Yeah, very, very cool. Great park. I think I'm kind of repeating myself here, but uh, lots of content on a small, well, it's a pretty decent sized map, but I mean, there's a ton of content here, especially for a scenario. This was the, um, 
what, the airfields. I think it's what? called and many and many airfields. <laughs> Was it? I did not know yeah. that. It's the Amity airfield scenario, which is just pretty incredible to see what he's done with it. Did he beat this scenario? It's like the hardest scenario uh, to beat. No, he, he failed. That's okay. <laughs> 3,000 3, guests in four years, but no no money, basically, is pretty impossible. No wonder he didn't win the Spotlight. Uh, I don't know if anybody's ever beaten this scenario, to be honest. Except for maybe Chris Sawyer himself, but we'll never know. I don't want to brag. I don't want to brag or nothing, but I beat it once. You beat it once? Wow, it's pretty impressive. It should be a Hall of Fame for people who. Probably the highlight of my life. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, yes, there are a few CSO objects. Um, originally started out, I think, as a full NCSL. Like, if you go back to the first version, like the 1998, I believe, it's almost all NCSO, except for some very, very few. But the newer versions, he's added a lot more CSO objects, like some of these rounded blocks here, and then um, these road lines and uh, these um, angled deco pieces and stuff. But yeah, pretty, pretty solid. And I think the score is pretty accurate, in my opinion, at least. I agree. Okay, so next we're going to look at 